Hey, Eagle fans, it's Eagle fan Carl, and uh, we're doing a little something different uh, this week. Uh, since I had told you before that I wasn't going to be able to watch the whole game, uh, I was texting with my one cousin, Stephen, and he said that he wasn't going to be able to see the first half, but he'd be able to see the second half. So what we decided to do is we split up our duties, and uh, so I watched the first half, and I've got some thoughts. Stephen watched the second half, and also some of the first half, too. Uh, but he watched some of the first half and, uh, and the second half, so he has some thoughts as well. Um, so, Stephen, first of all, before we get into studs and duds, uh, how does it feel to be a fan of the best team in football? Feels awesome. Very exciting. The whole city is, is, is elated. Everything, everyone's just so happy on Mondays these days. It's beautiful. Yes, yes, very much so. Um, the, uh, it's, so people who so people know, Stephen actually lives right in the city. So uh, he gets the, uh, the, the heartbeat and the pulse right away. So we sort of get that instant reaction. So that's pretty sweet. Um, well, as far as I had said, you know, going into the game, I got what I wanted, which was I was hoping the game would be over by halftime and we'd have this thing easily won, which is exactly what happened. 31-9 at halftime. I went to my meeting feeling really good and knowing that it would take an absolute meltdown for us to end up losing that game. Uh, so what was your, when did you actually, when were you able to start to finally pick it up and start watching? I, I came in about the middle of the second quarter. Okay. So I missed the first couple of scores, but from then on I got to, I got to see it. Going into the, um, the, the scores going right before halftime and then after halftime on I got to watch it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's kind of funny because um, I'm in Atlanta for a conference and I was reading uh, on Comcast Sports Net Philly, that they apparently, if you were in another part of the country, they ended up switching the game because it was such a blowout. So even if I had been here and had been watching yeah. it, I would have yeah. lost the last fourth, I would have lost the fourth quarter anyway. I wouldn't have been able to watch it anyway. So it worked out just as well that I was, I would have gotten, I would have been really pissed. Even though the game was completely over, I would have been really upset if they had taken the game off and put, I think it was like Tennessee Baltimore or something that they put on. I'm like, I don't want to cares about those teams. If I want to watch Baltimore, I could have stayed in Maryland. Um, but at any rate, uh, you know, in, in terms of the game itself, though, I mean, it was complete domination. I mean, it's just from, from the jump. I mean, they just completely dominated that team. They destroyed what was supposed to be the number one defense in the NFL, which I take a little issue with the way people determine that because that's based on yardage. Uh, they were only 13th in scoring, which I had pointed out in my prediction video. Interestingly enough, they dropped from 13th in scoring down to 25th after this game. <laughs> that's how much you beat them. Uh, you know, when you put a 50 spot up on someone, that's going to happen. You're going to drop way down. Uh, the only thing that, that made it even better is the fact to see the Giants gave up 51 points, too. That was, that was another just an absolutely beautiful thing as well. Yes. yes. Um, so, uh, so by the time we got into the fourth quarter, I mean, you could tell me, I, I, when, did, when did they start putting the backups in? Foles came in with uh, over nine minutes left in the game. Okay. So I think it was like at the 9.30, 9.40 mark when he came in. I, I don't think Wentz played at all in the fourth quarter. Um, and you could see people coming in and out even before then. Um, you, well, they, they rotate people so much now, especially on the defensive line. Um, but it was, it was clearly once it was at hand, they were, they were substituting people out pretty, pretty readily. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hey, um, so like we said, Nick Foles even gets in there. And it, Nick Foley, did, did, did you have a completion this week? Heck yes, I did. Ah, that's what I thought. Uh, so even, even Nick Foley had gotten the game, and he was able to, to contribute to the team. And that actually led to the last score, correct? Co correct, yes. Um, he, had a, um, he had a great fourth down completion to Aguilar. Aguilar fought for the ball and got it. It was, it was a beautiful pass. It was a fourth down situation. And uh, it, everyone, everyone was thinking he was just going to run it. And he threw this beautiful pass down the seam to, uh, to Aguilar. Aguilar fought for the ball, caught the ball. It, things are just amazing this year. <laughs> yeah. well, well, we know that Nick Foles isn't exactly the best running quarterback in the NFL anyway, so it's probably just as good. So let's go ahead and, and look at some uh, – we'll start, obviously, wins. We always start with the bad first, so we'll start with duds. Some people that I had for possible duds in the first half, I had Matt Collins for a missed tackle on their long punt return that they had, uh, and Joe Walker for giving up a, a longer pass um, that, uh, you know, that 
that set up one of their field goals, but that was a mismatch. I mean, you got a linebacker lined up against the wide receiver. That's bound to happen. Um, you you had some some possibilities for the second half, right? Yeah, I had one. I had Jake Elliott who missed a point after a point after, uh, which. You know, he missed two last week. He missed one this week. And when you're missing extra points and it's a no-pressure situation at all, you're winning by, by multiple scores, um, you really need to make those. And, and as it, the season goes on, if we, if we lose a game by one point that he misses an extra point, we're going to take down the statue that we built for him after the Giants game. And <laughs> he's going to be right out of town. Yeah. And uh, the, the funny thing about that is uh, – Probably the only people who really care about that are people that have him on their fantasy team. <laughs> Everybody else probably was like, ah, well, 44, 45, who really cares, you know, what, whether or not uh, we've got that extra point. But people that had him on his fantasy team were probably, like, pissed that he, he mixes a yes. point after in, in a game like that, uh, especially when you've got so many opportunities. I will say this, though, in his defense, is sometimes when it's not a pressure situation, that's when I think sometimes players don't pay attention quite as much. And obviously I didn't see it, so I didn't know exactly what the problem with the miss was, if it was a bad hold or snap or whatever. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's that's what it is. And you're just not concentrating as much uh, because it's such a blowout. So maybe we give him a little bit of pass on that. I guess the only other possible person we could list on the duds is Nick Foles for the fact that he fumbled and, and gave up the one score uh, that I saw. So that's the only other possible. Idiot. Uh, so, yeah, we're talking about these guys that only, uh, you know, made one play uh, that we're talking about in a game where we completely dominated them. And so, really, I mean, I don't, I don't really want to do that. I, I'd rather call them, like, more dishonorable mentions for studs or for duds than I would actually want to put them on a duds list. So, uh, in, yep. in light of that, how about we declare a dud-free week? You with me on that one? Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Super. We dominated the number one defense. No duds. <laughs> okay. Uh, in terms of studs of the week, then, uh, I want to get your – I have five that I've got. I've also got some honorable mentions. Um, but I want to get your – see if you have any uh, studs that you think uh, should go on the list and, and see, what you, uh, see what you think. Uh, I would say the – a couple things. The offensive line, I'm going from lowest to highest like you do. Uh, the offensive line run blocking uh, along with Corey Clement in the second half um, was, was – was very strong. They did a great job, especially when you compare their performance to last week to this week. I've uh, seen a lot of stuff coming together with Vitae. Everyone's concerned about him. His name was not called at all this game. Um, did a great job. Um, Kelsey's playing great. Brooks is playing great. Wisniewski is playing great. All these guys are, are, are stepping it up, playing well, especially after um, one of the things I found interesting after the Niners game Lane Johnson said that that game lost because they played so poorly. And I really felt like they they took it seriously this game, that they were going to play hard. And they really got up for this game, and they played really well. So I put them as a as a, um, as a as a, as a stud. And uh, along with that, Cora Clement. When you got Cora Clement running into all everybody, an undrafted, uh, undrafted rookie, that's, that's looking like uh, an amazing running back out there. You know you have some good run blocking happening. No offense to Corey Clement. He played a good game. Uh, going up my list, I do the, the defensive line next. Um, and the, the combination defensive line and secondary um, working together. Um, so that you see that especially with, with Cox forcing the interception that McLeod caught. Um, just, you know, we talked about it at uh, the beginning of the season where we said our corner, cornerbacks were a weak Weak, weak look in the defense, but if our defensive line was so strong that quarterbacks running for their lives, it's, it's going to cover that. And then we saw that exactly this, this past week. Um, and we've seen it throughout the season where it's, uh, it's the old buddy Ryan, no, no quarterback ever completed a pass on his back, right? <laughs> and uh, and we're, we're seeing that this year, and it's been, it's been great. So i got to give Flexer Cox, and i got to give uh, all those guys, Jerrigan, Graham, I'll go down the line. They, they all played great. So for my, my number one stud would have to be Doug Peterson. Um, the way that he coached, and I'll just talk about the second half. Um, the, the way that he coached in the second half um, was, was very impressive to me. The first drive when they came out um, from halftime uh, was 13 plays, 77 yards, seven and a half minutes knocked off the clock. Um, just methodically going down the field, 
sucking the life out of Denver. And uh, it's just a beautiful thing. And you got to give credit to Doug for that. I mean, um, he's calling the plays. Um, he's, he's keeping things going. Uh, so got to give credit for him on, on particularly that drive. Uh, but then also in the second half, um, he was aggressive on fourth down. And uh, so that's something we've seen throughout the whole season and throughout his whole career here with the, with the, with the Eagles. But, you know, when, when you're up by a couple scores and you're still being aggressive and it's working, um, in my mind, it was the right thing to do. Um, it, you know, I thought, you know, a couple times I had a little bit of second guess. Like, are we, are we running up the score? Are we, are we doing stuff that we shouldn't do? Are we being unsportsmanlike or anything? I was like, no, 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 no. I saw the Super Bowl last year, <laughs> and I've seen teams come back. And I remember, you know, you're in Atlanta. <laughs> Ask any fan <laughs> what they think. No and joke. Denver's a good team, and so. Um, Go for it on fourth down, Doug, and keep it going. And and he was aggressive, but he was not he wasn't foolish about it. But if it's fourth and short and, and you're within that that range, then then go for it, Doug. And he did the right thing with that. And then the, the last thing I'd like to say about Doug is uh, he he protected his starters. So um, he 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 got them out got them out when when the when the game was was well within hand. Like we said, once once didn't even play for most of the fourth quarter. Um, Wentz only got sacked one time this game, and that was something that we've been concerned about all year long um, mm -hmm. is, is protecting Wentz. And uh, he was protected this, this game, and he, he uh, especially as, as the game went on, he was just handing the ball off, short, play, short um, passes, protecting Wentz, and that's, that's the most important thing. We keep Wentz healthy, then the season's going to be great. So I, I give Doug Peterson my number one stud of the game. He, he this coached an, an amazing game, game planned, and, and, and just talking about the second half, uh, did everything right that, you, that he should have done. So he'd be my number one stud of the game. All right. Uh, and uh, I think we're going to have some agreement on some of this. Um, first of all, uh, on my studs, I decided I wasn't going to pick any defensive players because that offensive team just stinks. I mean, Brock Lobster is like, he's, he's <laughs> And, uh, you know, so the level of difficulty, you've sort of got to take that into account, I think. I think Brandon Graham had a great game. I'd give him an honorable mention. Uh, Patrick Robinson with the big first-half pick, uh, I'd give him an honorable mention as well. So I, I think that you've got some of those players that certainly, I think, uh, had really good games on the defensive side of the football. But the, the level of difficulty when you're going up against a team that's struggling that much on offense, I think you also have to take into account. So all my five studs are going to be from the offensive side of the football. Uh, my number five is going to be Alshon Jeffrey. Uh, and fans have been on him all season, uh, you know, about his production and stuff. But his production was really good this game. He gets two touchdowns, including the first one, that I think just really sort of demoralized the Broncos from the get-go because, you know, they're coming in as supposedly this great defense. And the ease with which we scored that first touchdown was embarrassing if you're going up against the top-ranked defense in the league. Uh, so I think that that was a huge play. And, uh, you know, Alshon Jeffrey was obviously on the receiving end of that. So uh, I'm going to give Alshon Jeffrey my number five. My number four, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it to Corey Clement uh, for a lot of the reasons you're talking about. Uh, and, you know, he just – when a guy scores three touchdowns, you've got to recognize that. I mean, even, if the, even though, you know, one or two of them was in the second half when it was more garbage time, uh, the, the first touchdown was a thing of beauty. Uh, I had been screaming for the last few weeks – for more screen passes, and uh, they brought it out at the perfect time because the Broncos were absolutely not ready for that. And the way – with the easily he scored that on that screen pass, I think, uh, just goes to show that, you know, Doug Peterson is, you know, playing call – doing the play calling well, and, uh, you know, Corey Clement was able to take it to the house as a result of that. My number three is going to be uh, – I'm going to cheat a little bit and put two guys in, but that's because it's really for the same reason. And that's Brent Selleck and Trey Burton because, you know, an hour before game time, we find out Zach Ertz is not going to play because of the hamstring. And that was a real concern because he's been such a big weapon for us this year. Uh, and uh, I think before the game, he was leading the team in touchdown receptions. Uh, and I think he was leading the team in overall receptions as well. And so when you take away that weapon, and certainly he's been a little bit of a security blanket for, uh, for Wentz this year, you take that away, you really get concerned. And when you when they came right out, and it's not that, you know, uh, Selleck and Burton had decent games. They came right out and went to them right away. And I think it really showed the Broncos, hey, listen, 
we don't have our best tight end, but you still better take the tight end seriously because we're going to go to them just as much as we did if Ertz is in the game. And, you know, Selleck, we've been talking about, you know, how he's a geriatric and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, he's, he's ready to, to, you know, go to a, a nursing home and stuff. But he really played a good game and he showed those flashes of what we had for him over the last 10 years and how good of a player he's been for us. So it was really nice to see him have a really good game again. Um, my number my number two stud is going to be the quarterback, Carson Wentz. And I know his stats weren't that eye-popping at the end of the game. He only threw for 199 yards. Uh, so he didn't even hit 200 yards. But he had four touchdown passes, which is obviously huge. And he's now had multiple touchdown games uh, for the last five. And that's you're getting into really rare uh, air when you're talking about where he's playing in terms of other Eagles quarterbacks in the past. And uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit later about uh, what I'm going to do with the bye week, but Carson Wentz is really going to be my focus on the bye week. Uh, so I don't want to take away too much of what I'm going to say then. But needless to say, he's really playing at a high level. People talking MVP, absolutely they should be talking MVP for him. And it isn't just the yardage. It's the little things he does. Coming into the game, everyone knew that their pass rush was aggressive. So what's he do? He uses that against them. He pulls a page out of Aaron Rodgers' playbook with the hard counts. Uh, there was at least three times I can think of where he draws them all sides and gets an easy five yards. And that, that's huge because then that automatically, it makes the defense have to wait just a half second before they start their pass rush. And that really, I think, ends up uh, sort of uh, making it, – it, it really neutralizes, I think, the pass rush that Denver had and led to so much of the success. So that's not going to show up in a stat page, but that was a huge, that was a huge thing that he brought to the game. Uh, as far as my number one stud, I'm going to agree with you. you got to give it to Dougie P. Uh, you know, when you dominate a team that much, uh, the head coach has got to get the credit for that. I mean, I think both him and Jim Schwartz both came up with beautiful game plans. Uh, the play calling that Doug Peterson has been doing over the last several weeks has just been really good. He's known when to call certain plays. He sets things up, and uh, it works then when he calls it. And I think he's really working well with Carson Wentz in terms of recognizing what the defense is doing. And he, uh, he and Carson really, I think, have a good relationship where they're really talking to one another. They understand what the defense is trying to do and what the proper response is. So I'm going to give you uh, – I'm going to agree with you, and I think, Dougie P, you're the number one star of the week. And really, you've been uh, almost – I think Carson's the number one stud of the season, but uh, Doug Peterson really is right there. He's one, he's one B and Carson's one A in terms of the studs for the season. Uh, you know, he's, he's really helping. He's really making that video I did in defense of Doug look really good right now. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I think that that's, uh, uh, he's really shown what he can do. And I think that's fantastic. Oh yeah. So absolutely. I, I agree with everything you said about Doug and, and your, your, your studs would be on, on my list as well. Um, just, just great work by, by the whole team. The whole, the whole unit did a great job. I'd, I'd like to see Alshon come down with a few more catches. Um, there was a couple, couple incompletions. So I, I don't know if I – he had a couple of touchdown catches, which, which are great, but he had a couple times that he should have caught the ball and, and dropped it. He's supposed to be our number one receiver. We'll have to think as, as the season goes on what, what we're going to do with him next year. But um, – I want him to be catching, you know, 70% of the passes, not not 50 or 40% of the passes. Um, yeah. well, I'm not sure I'd put him on the stud list. But. Yeah, and maybe, maybe, I, maybe I missed that with, uh, you know, with um, uh, not seeing the second half. So um, I, I, there was one person that you recognized that I really liked, and that was um, and that was Lane Johnson in the offensive line, uh, but specifically Lane Johnson because of the bounce back he had from the 49ers game. Uh, so how about we do this? Uh, would you agree with me then if we switch out the number five stud? How about we switch out Alshon Jeffrey and put Lane Johnson in there? Are you good with that? That sounds good to me. All right. Yeah, let's let's do that. So those will be our what five about, studs of the week then. We didn't uh, Peterson, Carson Wentz, uh, the tight end combination of Selick and Burton, Corey Clement, and Lane Johnson. So those are our five studs of the week. Uh, so those are my thoughts. Uh, and thank you to uh, my cousin Steven for jumping on and giving his some of his given the fact that, uh, you know, I, I wasn't able to see the second half, so it was fantastic. I think we need to do this again at some point. Uh, I don't necessarily want to do it every week, but I think this is a great thing we should, we should look to do uh, maybe again in the future. Um, so uh, it was great seeing you uh, and great talking with you about the game. Uh, just so uh, you fans know, my plan for uh, – I'm going to be doing something over the bye week, sort of looking at Carson Wentz 
and what he's done so far in the first half of the season, some of the how those numbers project for a full season potentially, and what that means in terms of you know where he's playing in terms of the league is concerned, and also where he's playing in terms of Eagles history. So I'm going to be taking a look at some of those things uh, during the bye week. Uh, but, hey, we've got a real big game coming up in two weeks against the Dallas Cowboys, so it's going to be fun leading into that week. Uh, but like I said, I'll check in over the weekend for the bye week and let you know some of my thoughts, and we'll do sort of a, a mid-season recap of what's going on. But until then, fly Eagles fly.